Lemon Amiga presents A Play Child Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show Once again, welcome to a very special Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Beneath the Steel Sky, developed by Revolution Software and released by Virgin in 1994. On the title screen, we get an option to change our language and also a few more options as well on the CD32 version, including lowering the volume of the music and we can also start from a chord which we shall see maybe a little bit later on. We can also change the text and the speech. Well, for this, let's just leave the text and the speech both on and then press the arrow to start the game itself. We can also hear some great music in the background, which is unique to this version of the game. Well, let's press that mouse button and check this game out. Just like the disc version, the CD32 version opens with an animation. You can see clouds and smoke moving in a helicopter. And this is our introduction to Robert Foster, who crash lands in the middle of a futuristic city, having made his way from the gap. This is the CD32 version that we can see, and as far as I can see, they haven't touched up the graphics for age here. This is the same graphics as we managed to get on a normal Amiga, but they have included voice speech sound effects and samples in the game. We've made it to the first room, let's see what they have to say. What are you on? Looking for a saboteur from the gap. He crashed a chopper and escaped. Oh. Sounds dangerous to me. Don't worry, he's not going anywhere. We cut the power to the elevator, and a crash has blocked the walkway. What if he comes in here? You'll be fine. We posted guards, and Reich wants to hunt him down personally. Right, eh? This guy must be important. Yeah, we got orders direct from Link. Take him alive before he does any more damage. Best of luck to you. These guys are out to get me, but why? They already destroyed my home and my people. Well, Reich, whoever you are, it's retribution time. Gotta be clever. Play them at their own game. First thing is to get Joey running again. Well, then give us a code which we can enter in at the start of the game to skip to this part and it will give us codes all the way through it because we cannot save on the CD32. But what we can do is pick up this rung and that will mean that we can Jamie open the door at the end of this platform and that will mean that hopefully we can evade the guard on the bottom and I'll be flashing through this play guide pretty quickly. Unfortunately, we will be talking over quite a lot of those voice speech sound effects. There isn't a fire. Who's up there? You won't escape that way. We'll also be cutting out some of the story as well in the essence of time because this is a long game so what happens is he checks he must have jumped fell all the way to ground level and he walks away phew lucky escape 
That means that we are now free to open that door again or walk down to the bottom. And what do we find? Well, we find a junk room, first of all. And this is the first real puzzle in the game. What are we supposed to do with all this junk on the table? Well, let's click on a few things and find out what they do. And we have a circuit board which we can insert into something. A discarded coffee machine? It's a robot shell. Rusty, but it might work. It's got no circuit board. Let's try to insert the circuit board into that unit and see if that comes to life. Welcome back, Joey. Is this the best shell you could find? Listen, we're in deep trouble. You've turned me into a vacuum cleaner. It's functional. Don't be ungrateful. Now, I don't know where we are or why we were brought here, but I intend to get some answers. I've got a weird reading from my scanner. We're 120 meters above the ground. We've got to find a way down and keep out of the way of security. At the beginning of the game, we'll have to interview everybody, and that includes asking all of the questions to guys like this. Weren't you told? Routine inspection. Nobody told me. I'm too busy to show you around. Don't worry, I can show myself around. You won't even notice I'm here. Where did you get that robot? I built him. Like it? It's crap, son. We'll need to somehow break into this cabinet. And so let's ask questions. Can you distract that maintenance man? What do you suggest? A song and dance routine? A few conjuring tricks? Now you're being silly. That little shell suits you, Joey. Get lost, Foster. It's awful. Find me a new one. What tools does that shell have? None of any use. Unless you're into housework. I've got an onboard buffing and polishing tool and an extendable probe. And some of these questions will give us clues as to what we're supposed to do. Let's ask Joey if he can operate this machinery for us. And oh no, we've stood on the platform by mistake. Hey, what are you doing? I told you already. Routine inspection. Well, keep off that elevator. I can't hear myself think. That means that we can now rush in as quickly as possible, open up that cupboard as quickly as possible, and take out the contents, which includes a sandwich, which absolutely does nothing as far as I know, and also a spanner, which we're definitely going to need in this game. Now that we have the spanner, we can ask Joey for your fix to transport. Can you start that transport? How do you expect me to do that? I'm just a cleaning droid, remember? Which he won't do because he's only a normal cleaning droid. Can you start that transport? You don't give up, do you? Have you found out what's wrong with it? No, I'm not sure. So we can find out what's wrong with it by asking the guy in the other room. And having found that out, then we can ask Joy to fix it for us. Who's in charge around here? Not me. I just work it. Hobbins is the name. Who's in charge, and where can I find him? It's Lamb you'll be wanting. He's the supervisor. I see. And who does he work for? The council, of course. Tell me more about the council. They govern the city, with the help of Link. What's that? The computer they built as their advisor. What was it like before Link? Ah, those were the days, son. We didn't have the problems we got now. So who built the computer? Search me. Flipping research scientist, probably. How come your fire exit leads nowhere? You've been up there. It's not safe. I could see that. If you break your legs, don't come running to me for sympathy. What's the best way out of the city? You'll have to get to ground level first. You're at the top of Erie Tower Block. Can't I use your elevator? No, you can't. It's not built for humans. And besides, it only goes down to the furnace. So how do I get to ground level? There's an elevator out on the walkway. Of course, you can't reach it right now. Why not? Because Reich's boys are guarding the exit from the plant. 
How come your elevator's not working? It's activated automatically by the transport robot. What's wrong with the transport? It's broken down. Again. It's probably the Doppler charge thingamajig. But I haven't got time to mend it now. I'll get on with my inspection. You do that, son. And this game is as easy as that. All we need to do is to ask Joy to help us, and Joy will be our friend at many steps along this game, and we'll be getting quite our way through it in this play guide. Doppler charge reducer thingy. In that case, all it needs is a jump start. This is embarrassing, Foster. You're not gonna watch, are you? I always suspected you of being a voyeur. Come on, just do it. Here goes. There. How was it for you? Now the machine is working, all we need to do is to hang around, wait for it to pick up a barrel, and it will eventually put that on the lift, and then we can jump down the lift and go down to the level below. It's not an easy puzzle to solve, and I was struggling right at the beginning of this game trying to solve this particular puzzle. Now I've gone down to the furnace, now it's a completely new room and a completely new puzzle. I've got nothing that would fit. It must need a special card. It's much too high to reach. That thing's watching me. Good thing I'm naturally photogenic. This review goes out to the Amiga Kit guys, who specially requested this particular game, and it's my pleasure to finally get around to releasing this footage that I recorded some years ago. This must be where the scrap gets melted. Is that why you brought me here? Don't worry, kid. They'd only take premium quality scrap. Can you open that door? I'll give it a try. No sudden moves over, man. Get over to the furnace. You're Officer Reich, I presume. You've made a mistake. I'm not Overman. Link, we can't let him escape. What the hell is going on? Reich seems pretty cut up about it, but he's given me two leads. Overman and Link. That's another puzzle completed, and for our time and trouble, it gives us a card which we can use also throughout this game. Barbecued. I'll never eat kebab again. He was carrying an ID card. The card may be useful, and I'll take his dark glasses too. This thing loads from a CD32, it's not that quick to load, and it's only loading the OCS version, which is a shame, but as I say, at least we do get voice speech sound effects, which actually add a lot to this game. We're way up in the clouds, Joey. We need to find a way to the ground. We'll need to explore all of these rooms, and all of these rooms are important at one stage or another, and we can interview this guy for some more conversation, and of course conversation in this game will explain what we're supposed to be doing, and where we are, and half of the game is in the story, half of which we'll be cutting out in this review. But it's that voice speech acting that I'm really interested in, so let's interview these characters. Excuse me. Yep. What do you want, speak up? I'm here to inspect the plant. Oh, I'm allergic to plants. They give me sores and boils. I meant the power plant. Well, what's stopping ya? Who are you anyway? My name's Foster. Stay away from him, Rob. He's a human bomb. What are you talking about? He's got a fuse in his mouth. 
That's a cigarette. He's inhaling the smoke for pleasure. Get serious, Foster. You can tell this is a 90s game with some of the humour, and most of which I probably couldn't get away with now, which seemed to be the buzzword of the 2000s, what you can and can't get away with these days. In this room there isn't much that we can get away with at this point, and the spanner isn't going to do much either, but if we walk over to those buttons you can see on the other terminal, then we can press those and something happens, which is good because it means that we can overcharge this unit and the guy will run out, which gives us access to this control panel. And sometimes the puzzles in this game are quite difficult, and just like all of the point-click adventures on the Amiga, I had to rely on walkthroughs to get me through some of these puzzles and help tips as well in magazines. Now you've done it, mate. I'll have to fetch old Obbins. And you'd better stay here, in case there's an explosion. We can now turn off the switch, which means we can now pick up that light bulb, which we'll need towards the end of the game. But we can pick it up now, and we'll also need something to blow up on this control panel. For that, we'll need to backtrack, and we can explore some more buildings, and there is a workshop in this very end building. Then we can interview the woman in charge, and we can also find out what's going on. What are you doing? I'm checking the pipes. Do they have to be perfect? How do I get down to ground level? Take the elevator. Or the big jump if you're desperate. Has security been in here? Yeah, they already stirred up. I think they were looking for someone. Look, I'm not supposed to talk to you. Why not? Supervisor's orders. I'm transferring you, lass. I wish you wouldn't call me that. My name is Anita. Don't answer back, woman. Report to the testing room immediately. What are you doing here? Do you know who I am, lad? I've no idea. I don't work here. I'm Gilbert Lamb, the supervisor. Mind if I look around? I certainly do. Who are you? Safety inspector. Outrageous. I've not been notified. Besides, we were inspected last week. This is a random spot check. I don't care. Get out. We've been kicked out of that building, but luckily if we hang around outside and play with the machine for a bit, which doesn't seem to be working, then we can wait for Gilbert Lamb to come out. And that means that we can sneak in behind him and check out the rooms. And he will try to use the elevator, which I don't think is working at this particular point. That's something that we'll have to get working if we want to get off this godforsaken level of the game. And yes, this upper level, this first level, is quite difficult. Hey! My mistake, thought it was the John. It's the storeroom, the robots only. Lamb doesn't trust humans to go in there, even though there's nothing worth pinching. I want you to check out the storeroom. What's the catch? There's no catch. There could be something useful in there. Don't count on it. We can also use the window that you can see on the side of the building to watch Joy going in there. But before we do that, we can also insert this spanner. That's really put a wrench in the works. Oh no! Production stopped! You wouldn't know anything about it, would you? The machinery looks outdated to me. It's not that old. It was only built 30 years ago. That explains why it stopped, doesn't it? Oh well, I'll pretend I didn't notice it. Find anything useful in the stores? No, but there's a fuse box on the wall, connected to the alarm system. Can you disconnect it? Sorry, no can do. 
I think the humour in this game is fantastic and it also helps because of the interactivity you have to interview people all the time to get further and it means that you can help each other. Let's just pick up the spanner jammed in the cogs and hopefully we can now go to the other robot and put Joey inside it. So it's the interactivity of this game which is fantastic, the script is fantastic and if only the sound effects were brilliant but you can hear some music on this particular level which is of course from the CD and that's not something that we got on the standard Amiga version. Do you want a new shell Joey? Do you mean that welder? That's right. Do you like it? I'll say. It's a much nut. Unfortunately we'll still have to wait for the animation but there is some good animation in the game and it's fun and friendly to have all this stuff going on. Congratulations, now that's another part of the mystery complete. We can now use this shell. How do you like the new shell? It's sleek. Can't wait to use the welder. You be careful with that thing. If I want you to use it, I'll tell you. Exterminate! Exterminate! And cut that out! How do I get off this level? Well, I hear there's been a crash, so access to high green is cut off. You'll have to use the elevator. Never mind. Go and disable the fuse box in the stores. I could melt through it with my welder. Wouldn't that be dangerous? Very, but I'm feeling reckless, and welding is fun. Take care, Joey. We can now get Joey to melt through the alarm system, and that means that we should be able to walk into that room and pick up anything that's in there. Do you know a guy called Overman? Doberman? No, I don't. What do you do for entertainment around here? If I'm looking for entertainment, I go home and watch a video. When will the elevator be repaired? I don't know. Security have disabled the elevator. It's not good enough. I shall register a complaint. The council shall hear of this. So let's walk around and investigate and see how far we can get. Seen anything of Obbins? What do you want him for? To mend the pipe in the power plant. Can't you fix it yourself? I wouldn't dare. Well, I haven't seen Obbins all day. He's probably busy. And this is the security office. There isn't much in here except for a link terminal. And I don't think that we can use that at the moment because that needs a retina scan. We can put the card in there, but when we try to access the security services, it will then scan us. And if we turn out to be not who we say we are, that will automatically fail. So it's great to check out the side quests or the side trivia in this game, they're not really side missions, but we can interview these guys and ask them loads of questions, most of which are very funny. Having a problem with your card? Let me check that for you. My card is coated with porridge. Porridge? Yeah, I dropped it in my breakfast. I meant to clean it, but I forgot. I've done that so many times myself. Really? It's so easily done, isn't it? You're having breakfast, you're in a rush, and plop. Your card submerged in soggy cereal. I can't reach the cable. Fancy doing some welding, Joey? You bet. I want some action. Who's the victim? You can't go using your welder on people. Oh, yeah? Who says? Asimov's Laws of Robotics. That's fiction, Foster. It's just something some guy made up. It's sound moral sense. Anyway, what I had in mind was that cable. This sounds like a job for Captain Welder. 
So now we can get Joy to take out this cable. We'll definitely need that. We'll need to remember to pick that up a bit later on because that cable will allow us to swing in like Indiana Jones and get to that central computer. For now, we've got access to the back room, so hopefully we can walk in there without the alarm going off and checking out in here. There isn't much. There is a gangway that we can lower down and that reveals some items, all of which reveal some kind of funny story, WD-40 and a key. But we're not really interested in them. All we're interested in is a blob of putty, which is very hidden in the landscape. And if you didn't know that was there by following the walkthrough, then you probably wouldn't find that by waving that mouse pointer around, which is one of the drawbacks of these point and click adventures. Don't move. I have to search you. What for? I'm not a criminal. It's the supervisor's orders. If anything's missing, I get the blame. Hey, that tickles. Open up that coat. Why are you carrying that crowbar? It's got sentimental value. My mother gave it to me. Is that a wrench? I carry it for luck. You're a walking toolbox. Blimey. Smart shades. You can have them if you like. Really? Oh. I could fix them with sticky tape. What's that light bulb for? Illumination? It needs electricity. There's no need to be sarcastic. I'm only doing my job. Well, you don't appear to have stolen anything. Thank you for your cooperation. By the way, that sweater you're wearing. Don't laugh at my sweater. Oh, I'm not. I think it's brilliant. Will you swap it for my clipboard? Not in a million years. Now we can use the pussy on that light socket and for whatever reason by flicking that switch it will then blow up. And in this particular room you have to make sure that both of the switches are on the down position which is an easy mistake to make. If they're not in the down position then nothing's going to work. So let's just make sure that both of those are in the down position and the switch, I think that's also in the down, well that's switched in the on position. That basically means that the elevator is now working and it means we can get down onto that second level. And these graphics, even though they were all CSECS graphics that you can load upon any Amiga, they were actually in NTSC compatible mode and so you can see that this screen mode has been stretched all the way down the screen so that we can get a full screen image out of it. Let's use that elevator and now we can move on to the second level of this game, literally, where we'll find a few more rooms and a whole lot more puzzles as well. You can see that rope, we'll have to pick up that rope or that cable as it calls it and that'll definitely help us. We'll then stuff that into our infinitely large coat and move on to that next location. So even though these are OCS graphics that have been hand drawn and scanned in, they are glorious even on an AJ machine like this. So this isn't 256 colours, it's probably barely 32 at most. But you can see the graphics by Dave Gibbons and Steve Ince are definitely glorious in this game. And this game was also produced by Charles Cecil with a script by Dave Cummins. We've now walked into a very special room that's the cosmetics, the, it's the plastic surgery. Welcome to Burke's Biosurgery. How may I help you? What services do you provide? A complete range of fash ops, from personal piercing to cosmetic transplants. But we're not going to get very much further in this one, so just like the previous level, if you don't know what to do, you'll have to check out all of the rooms. Good grief, it's positively pornographic. Naked people with extra parts. The things folk do for fashion. And hopefully in some of these rooms we can talk to people, and by asking them a whole load of questions, we can get a little bit further. Do people have ops to be fashionable? Certainly. Can you think of a better reason? 
What about medical purposes? Our clients are rich enough not to need medical treatment. It's also great that on the way back that we can take the other route and that means that we can see Lamb approaching from the elevator and that will bring us out in exactly the same place. That's just a graphical touch. So in this room we can check out the travel company or the insurance company and in here we can find another guy to talk to. Hello. Hi. You look like a man who needs insurance, yeah? Can I interest you in this? A rogue robot policy. I've never heard of that before. It's a safeguard against the possibility of your robot turning on you. Joey would never do that. Aha! So you think. Surveys show that 42% of all domestic droid owners are worried about the risk of attack. Let's also check out this travel company and hopefully maybe we can even travel our way off this place by buying a ticket and maybe if we talk to this guy we can convince him to help us. Hello. Welcome to Trevor's Travel Company. Where do you want to go? Can you get me to ground level? Sure. On one of my luxury air coach tours. Coach travel makes me sick. Me too. I prefer to keep my wheels on the ground. What kind of tours do you offer? Well, there's a wide choice. The Grand City Tour, the Economy City Tour, and the Mystery Tour. What's the difference between grand and economy? The economy tour is cheaper. Exactly the same itinerary, but less prestigious. I don't want to go on a tour. Please yourself. We're not going to get very far out of this unless we get Joy on our side and we've left Joy all the way back on the top level so what we're going to have to do is to use the card and bring him down and in here we can also chat to this guy and this guy will also reveal some mysterious information that we'll need to know and we can also use the card on the slot that we'll get into Riker's room And nothing really works except for the items that we really need to push and that's fantastic because it means we don't have to waste our time with unnecessary dialogue. Of course we'll pull back the pillow and find a necessary item and it's as easy as that. I couldn't sleep there. Reich would haunt me. We now have the magazine and that means that we can use the magazine in a place a bit later on and we can use that to bribe somebody and it's great to see all of these little touches in the game but none of which will help us at all so let's leave here and let's move on to another scenario where we'll try and get joy back from the top level and at this stage because he's in a very heavy suit we'll have to bring him down manually in the elevator for him let's just check out that crash this is the very first room that we entered and the crash isn't much we can talk to a guy and he'll interview us you can see the helicopter is in a pretty bad state so there isn't much we can do here except for like, my old graphics and so here's Joey but before we can use him of course Lamb steps in he takes priority and he will use the elevator to go to the lower level Let's wait for that fat person to get into that lift and then we can both squeeze into that lift together. This level, Joey. We need to find an elevator unless you're prepared to jump. And we should just about be able to fit into that elevator and Joey should be able to get there even though it gets there at a particular height on our body and there are in jokes all the way through this game like William Anchor and things like that don't be a W buy with Anchor and there are adult jokes sprinkled throughout you can see a guy with a rubber raincoat carrying an Anchor 
So we'll try and get that with Joey and see if he can get that loose using his special tool. Use your welder on that statue, Joey. What for? That anchor could be useful. I'm always ready for spot of welding. Hey, get your robot away from my statue. It can be annoying to lose your way and not have a clue what to do in this game, and that means longevity value is increased because we will have to try everything. Can you interface with that computer, Joey? I could if I wanted to. I'm asking you to do it. Correction, you're ordering me to do it. Don't be pedantic. Just do it. What am I searching for? Anything on Overman for a start. This directory is a hopeless mess. I'm going to reorganize this hard drive. That's better. There's nothing on Overman, though. Book me on the economy tour. I'll make your reservation. You can pick up the ticket in a month or two. Can't I have the ticket now? Sorry, there's a waiting list. We can now swap the magazine for a ticket, and that could be helpful if we could make use of that. All right, but this tour would better be worth it. It doesn't matter. We can't use the ticket, but we can give the ticket to Lamb, and that will mean that we can access his building and investigate that further. Hello, Supervisor. What are you doing down here? Why shouldn't I be here? I, I thought you were a D-Link. You were wrong, Lamb. Call me Gilbert. I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Never mind. Hey, Lamb. Would you like this ticket? What's it for, lad? A tour. Wouldn't you like a holiday? You're right. I really deserve a break. You know, I'm so touched. I'm going to give you something in return. I was kind of hoping you might. Something you'll look back on for the rest of your life. Yeah? Hi, lad. A tour of my factory. Oh. Great. Meet me there. Uh, you're in for a treat. Hey, Lamb. When do I get the tour you promised me? Well, there's no time like the present. We'll start right now. Now. Take a look at this machine. This machine measures the internal bore of the pipes. Accurate to 20 decimal places, whatever that means. Impressive, isn't it? All those numbers. I'm sure they mean something. Follow me. I'll show you the next section. This machine is supposed to drive the conveyor, but it's not bloody working. Heads will roll for this. Foreman Potts, why has this machine stopped? Stopped? I've been so busy I didn't notice. Can't I trust you with anything? Look after my guest, Potts. I'll have to leave you to show yourself around. That gives us access to another room, and I think the characters in this game are immensely memorable, and the voice speech acting, unlike Simon the Sorcerer, really adds an incredible amount to the game, and it's like playing a whole new game with the voice speech sampled sound effects. The reactor, if I was you, unless you're wearing some protection. We can now move into the reactor. Well, closer to the reactor room, and from here we get to see Anita again, and we can interview her, and she will also give us a special tool so that we can break into the master computer. I love the storyline in this game, and the story is not convoluted, it's very interesting. What are you doing now? Checking for cracks with x-rays. You shouldn't be here without a protective suit. You're not wearing one. Lamb told me I didn't qualify, as I'm a D-Link, and a woman. What's so special about these pipes? 
I'm not sure, but the dimensions of the bore must conform to precise specifications. All that effort for a bit of plumbing? It's suspicious, isn't it? Perhaps they're part of a giant weapon. Oh, come on, that's a bit far-fetched. What's a D-Link? D-Link is the lowest social category. When your link status is zero, you forfeit all rights and your freedom to move about the city. How come you didn't know that? I'm an outsider from the Gap. So it's you security you're after. You won't get far without an ID card. Ah, I managed to find one. I bet it won't get you to ground level, though. You'll need a link status of eight or more. I have to get to ground level. Look, I really sympathize with you. I could give you my jammer. What's a jammer? Bypass software. Highly illegal. It gets you past the retina scan to security files. That's a start. Can you let me have the jammer? Give me your ID card. Here's my card. Thanks. This won't take long. What are you doing? Downloading the jammer to your card. There, it's done. Don't worry. I'll fix everything. You're taking a huge risk. No problem. I'll get us both back on Link's files. How come you were made a D-Link? I was caught hacking into Link. Why did you do that? There are areas in Link space used by security. I was trying to discover what they're up to. What do you mean by Link space? The word inside the computer's memory. The abstract projection of Link's circuits and data banks. Will the jammer get me into Link space? No, the only access is through the special interface. There's just one little problem. You'll need to get a Schreibman port. How do I get a Schreibman port? Well, you'll have to undergo surgery. I need that like I need a hole in the head. The Schreibman port is a hole in the head. Does Link have any internal security? Well, they'll be foils, naturally. What are they? Intrusion foil programs. Are they dangerous? Well, standard IFPs are simply deterrents, but some high-level foils can be lethal. That can only mean one thing. If we want to shrieb them and pour it, we'll have to go to the biosurgery and get one put in. I want a Shreebman port. Your name, please? Robert Foster. There's little chance of seeing the doctor. Why not? I have instructions not to disturb him. Unless you wish to pay cash, of course. Do you think I need a doctor, Joey? We could both use an overhaul. Are you going to get a new body? There's nothing wrong with this one. Hmm. Try talking to that hologram, Joey. What for? I need to see the doctor, and she won't let me in. What shall I say to her? Use your natural charm on her. I've got an idea. I'll try the subtle approach. Hey, you! Open that door! I take my orders from Dr. Burke. I take mine from Oberman. Oh! Why didn't you say so before? Good grief. That means we can go in and see the Mad Doctor, and this game tips its hat off to a lot of the science fiction genres, and of course Star Wars and things like that. And in this particular room you can see it's like a bubble of light illuminating the very center of it, which is tremendously well done. Don't make me jump like that! Sorry, didn't realize you were busy. Just practicing. I like to keep my hand in. What can I do for you? I need a Shreebman port. Really? Do you have sufficient credit? All I've got are the clothes I'm wearing. In that case, you require the easy pay scheme. Yes, that sounds perfect. Kidney, lung, or testicles. What? what Which organ do you wish to sell? I'm not selling anything. No parts, no port. Send in the next customer. Excuse me. Maybe I wouldn't miss a kidney. I'll have to run some tests. Stand behind the scanner, please. Turn around, please. I can't use either of them. Why not? They're too good to sell at second hand. 
I'd have to overprice myself to be profitable. You make money by trading people's organs? What else would I do with them? Open a restaurant? I guess I've no choice, Doc. I'll have to sell you my... It's not as bad as you think. When I said I'd take your testes, I meant after your death. That's a great consolation. All I require from you now is your consent. Take a seat, please. Anybody who's seen Existence will be very familiar with this kind of treatment. Local anesthetic? Oh no, it doesn't hurt. Any more than having your ears pierced. In that case, I need a general anesthetic. You now have a Schriebman port. You may experience headaches, but don't worry, it's quite normal. Now let's try hacking into that computer again, and hopefully we've got the retina scan fooling document thing going on so we can check out these documents and checking out Gilbert Lamb's account we can freeze his assets and authorize him as a D-Link so D-Link rather than C-Link and B-Link and A-Link those are the different ranks apparently on this particular game and this reminds me of all kinds of things from Soylent Green upwards and all those 1984 kind of dystopia futures that we got back in the 1990s. Do you have a problem? Hi lad, I was hoping to see you. My card isn't working and I can't use the elevator. Perhaps you've been made a D-Link. Don't be so bloody impertinent, lad. What will poor little Couscous do? Who's Couscous? My pussy. She has to be fed. What would I do if she died? Make a hat to match your coat? I don't think that's very funny, lad. Besides, can beaver fur wouldn't match. I could feed her for you, if I could get into your apartment. You go down to Bellevue, and I'll authorize it so you can. By the way, Couscous likes to be pampered. Like all women, eh, lad? <laughs> Apart from D-Links, you mean. You need therapy, lamb. What's that robot doing here? He's my personal assistant. Say hello, Joey. Hello, Joey. <laughs> Pity he's got no brain. That means we can now access Lamb's apartment, and in here there's one thing that we're going to need, and that's a video cassette, and we can also check out the cat whilst we're in here, and some absolutely gorgeous animation. So although this is the very same ECS version that came on 15 discs, the very same version that I had back in the day, and it comes with very sparse sound effects, it does contain all those great graphics. And to some extent, those great graphics do make up for quite a lot. The story is very gripping, very convincing, the characters are very memorable, and look at that animation as well. But what we need in here is a video cassette tape, and luckily we can see that in plain view. And some of the puzzles in this game are horrendous, and some are very easy. And this is the easiest puzzle in the game, you simply pick up that video cassette. And anybody who remembers video cassette recorders knows now to put that in the VCR. If you were born after the year 2000, probably not. Look at that, digitized graphics and video is available in an Amiga game. Digitized video in a 15 disc Amiga game. Well, that's fantastic. That's the only item that we can interact with in this room. And so let's just use our information and let's try to get some more info out of this doctor. Ask my friend Willy and just tell him I sent you. He has a rather special policy. Thanks again for the port, Doc. It's a pleasure. I want one of your special policies. Who sent you? Dr. Burke. The ghoul, huh? He's cool. So, 
How can I help you? Can you get me out of the city? It's dangerous. Are you sure you've got the balls? That's a delicate subject. Wait here. I have to make a call. Now, where is Joy? If we can get Joy to now hack away at the anchor, we can now get pick that, that up. Away. And hurry before the jerk gets back. I think the music on the top level is tremendous and the music on this level is slightly not so good but you can see by mixing the cable and the anchor we've now got a rope swing that we can use, a grappling hook and if we go all the way back to the top of the tower again then we can use that to swing across to the central computer again not something that I knew I had to find out by looking at the walk through and so we're now going to swing across so some of the puzzles are very difficult indeed combining items like this i think you only need to combine that one item in the entire game this could be the most stupid thing i've ever done And it's a pity those sound effects more or less take a back seat but the music makes up for it and the voices make up for it and that's the only downside of this game yes it's NTSC that has to be stretched and those sound effects are a bit boring as well but apart from that the graphics are amazing let's check out this terminal and from here we can't do a great deal at this point what we need to do is to interact with the main system interface which again reminds me of Total Recall and things like that so we've seen Exizen's Total Recall all these different things and you can see we can use the slot and jump into the interface space where we get even more groovy music and this is a ziplock bag we can't open it but we do have lots of tools and these are programming tools and so what can we have well open let's open that zip bag it gives us some more tools a magnifying glass and also a decryptor and that decryptor will allow us to read documents in the link terminal outside and what we'll need to do is to decompress those documents before we can read them and you do that obviously by clicking on decompress and you can see I'm now decrypting and decompressing those things and so that should mean that we can read them on that terminal and chore on no idea what that means if you select the wrong door all that will do is eject us from the link system we will not die in this game we cannot die in this game and that means that we'll have to enter that place and try that again so some of the puzzles are great fun including this room which requires no walkthrough whatsoever we'll have to decompress those yin yang symbols and you put those on the floor and they will enable the walkway so this game well the main character was voiced by adam henderson who went on to judge dread with sylvester stallone in 1995 jason isaacs was also a voice actor and he was of course lucius malfoy in the harry potter series and brian bowles was also involved he was Frank Bruno, Paul Gascoigne and Michael Burke in Spitting Image. And so he was involved with Spitting Image and lots and lots of other computer and video games in his career. 
Thomas Revolution released Lure of the Temptress before this in 1992, and they also released the conversion of King's Quest VI in 1994, and Revolution have got a great appeal on the Amiga, they then moved on to the PC, and they carried on making these point and click adventures. to find a book and also an identity, and so we'll need to disconnect from Link from the internals of it at this point, interact with that computer, and that should mean that we can turn off one of the security devices in the mainframe itself, and that means that we should hopefully be able to get a bit further with it. But for the moment you can see we can also use the slot, the card slot, well that won't let us through at this point, because we haven't allowed ourselves to access that terminal, so let's grab that terminal, and from in here we can rank our security access all the way up to number one, which means finally we can get down to the lowest level in this game. Unfortunately we won't be seeing too much of that, and we'll be talking over some of that as well. So you can see this game has just as much to offer on the CD32 and the graphics and everything else is great, the story is great, the humour is great and there is an endless, endless chat about the story and endless exposition like Simon the Sorcerer and it's not endlessly trying to rip off other video games, it's a nice futuristic genre and there isn't that many of these around even today so it was very atmospheric in its game and still is today and for my money the only thing wrong with it is it's a bit too short. I hope his board isn't broken. It's too heavy to carry. Moving on to little scores, the Amiga Concept magazine awarded the CD32 version 84%, Lemon Amiga currently gave this version 85%, CD32 Gamer awarded this 90%, Amiga Power gave it 90%, CU Amiga also gave this 95% and a superstar award. That means Beneath the Steel Sky, the CD32 version gets an average score of 9 out of 10. What's through that door? It's off limits to the likes of you. I just wondered where it leads. It's the old cathedral. There's nothing interesting in there. In fact, it's empty. Why guard an empty cathedral? I'm not guarding it exactly. I'm just standing here. Preventing me from entering. Yes. Do you know the woman with the dog? Oh yes. That's Mrs. Beaumont. The richest woman in Union City. And the ugliest. What's the best way out of the city? There isn't a way out. Then the inhabitants are no better than prisoners. That's the price of progress. Never this game was futuristic and ahead of its time because in 1994 we didn't even have the internet. So a lot of these things, the futuristic things, we won't get to see until Johnny Mnemonic and films like that. And we won't get to see the bar unfortunately in this game. And we can get to talk to the guy outside. Hold it. Your uh, membership card, please? I don't have one. This is a private club. Oh, I didn't know that. You do now. Peace off. How do I join the club? You have to be sponsored by an existing member. It's a most exclusive establishment. Frequented only by those with the proper credentials. You mean people with money? No. People with credit. There's a world of difference. People with money think they can afford not to care. People with credit know they can't, but don't care anyway. I think this is one of the few games which definitely plays better on the CD32. The graphics aren't altered or anything else, but this is definitely worth a try just for this script. Hello, darling. I don't believe we've met. No, I'm a stranger here. I'm Mrs. Pierre. But you can call me Daniel. How do 
do I get out of the city? Now, why would you want to do that? There's nothing in the gap but sand and savages. But that's where I live. Oh, how ghastly for you, my dear. What's the mutt's name? <laughs> He's not a mutt. His name is Spunky. He looks like he's got fleas. He has millions of them. But he's allergic to the flea powder. Why don't you give him a good bath? Oh, I've tried, but he can't bear to get wet. Do you know someone called Overman? Why, yes, I do. He worked with my husband, Professor Pierre. Why? Are you interested in Overman? He was my father. I'm sorry, but I don't believe you. Overman's only son died in an accident. That was no accident, Mrs. Pyrmont. It was deliberate sabotage by security. My mother was killed, but I survived, and I've read a document which proves it. Incredible! Your mother was a great friend to me. If there's any way I can help you, just think. Thank you for viewing this play guide and review, and I'll see you again in the next one. Thank you. Amiga Kit Stall and Amiga Kit is a stalwart of many of these events and here you'll find all your Amiga needs if you still have the authentic hardware. You can see straight away there are peripherals on offer and detachables and things which you can use to convert different things and add to your computer. The joysticks there, there was actually a purple zip stick whilst I was there it actually got bought and I was tempted to buy that myself and Amiga Games, Box Zero there.